in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians um, chapter 2. Um, and um, my message tonight is entitled, This is Why It is Opposed. This is Why It is Opposed. On Saturday evening, we had God's great mystery, and we had the introduction uh, to the truth that God kept a secret before the world began and why He did so. And on Sunday night, um, this is what it's all about, and uh, an exposition of the great mystery of the body of Christ. And then last night, this is when it was revealed, uh, re regarding when um, this message was revealed and who it was revealed through, the Apostle Paul, obviously. And tonight, uh, my title is, This is Why It is Opposed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'll read from verse 1 through 7 um, there. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by the word, nor by letter, as from us, as that, at, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except they, they come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he as God sitteth on the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time." For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Father, we thank you this evening for this time, uh, for the saints here, the fellowship, your word that we can consider. And we pray, Father, as we consider your word that um, we will do it justice and that we will, and we thank you that your word, as we believe it, that you have inspired and also preserved for us in English. Um, that we can, um, as we look at it and we believe it and we trust it, that it works in us effectually. And um, we praise you and we thank you for these things. And above all, we also thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the life that we have in Him, the security we have because of Him, and the blessed hope we have. And we praise you and we thank you by Christ Jesus alone. Amen. So, <clears throat> you know... I, I'm thankful to stand here tonight. You know, I, I realize there's a lot of other guys here that can, that can do um, a better job. You know, and um, and I, and it's a humbling, it's a humbling thing to stand before you guys and teach tonight and to 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 do this. And um, and you ask my friends, I, I'm the guy with a lot with the less confidence, uh, the least confidence in myself and my own ability. And so I pray that you guys continue. Um, you know, to consider the word as we search it tonight. It's not about me. It's not about what I do yet. It's about what God's word is saying. Okay, and um, and and it and it's a humbling um, thing to stand before you and to preach for you. And it's not just you yet. There's folks um, all on the internet listening to friends of mine, and 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 I guess there's even not friends of mine listening on the internet. <laughs> And um, they'll be judging every word I've been saying or whatever, you know. But that, that comes with the territory, you know. So it's a privilege to be, and I, and I, and I thank you for the minister. Thank you for all of you and your, your, your kindness, um, your brotherly love, and um, the mutual faith that we share here tonight. And it's, it's a privilege to stand here again, and I thank you for that. And um, my, 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 the purpose of my lesson was, is this. <laughs> I said almost was, you know, like I'm going to change it. <laughs> Maybe I am going to change it. <laughs> no, uh, the purpose of my lesson is an exposition of the adversary's counterfeit program to corrupt the message of grace and disrupt the ministry of the body of Christ. So the phrase that I'm going to zone in here is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 7. The mis for, for the mystery of iniquity, iniquity doth already work. The issue of when Paul was spending this in the formation to the uh, to to to, to to the Thessalonians, he's writing to them, and they were concerned about um, going through the tribulation, going into the tribulation and all this thing. And the whole emphasis of Second Thessalonians, first and Second Thessalonians, is the taking away of the body of Christ into the heavenlies. And then also that the fact is that the body of Christ will not go through the 70th week of Daniel and will not enter into that or any part of that. And they will not be part of any of this, uh, what's going to go on through the seven, seven, uh, 70th week of Daniel, and they will not face the day of wrath, okay? 
the very factors that he told us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, if you will, verse 10, he says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Guess what? We are delivered from the wrath to come. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we should not be worried about what's coming on that day when, and when Jesus Christ is executing his wrath. Okay? And by the way, it's not wrath. Okay? And I say it all the time. Oh, let me just say this. I've come to the point where I'm starting to say wrath, okay? <laughs> it's scary to speak like an American. <laughs> but First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And we are saved, and we have a salvation, and we do not have to face that day of wrath, and that, that, that when Christ is executing wrath, okay, and, and the 70th week of Daniel. And I thank the Lord for that, okay? But the fact is in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he is saying there in verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It has been working at the time that Paul was writing to the Thessalonians. This mystery of iniquity was already working. As a matter of fact, Satan's plan of evil and his whole, his whole uh, uh, scheme that he had, his policy that he had, and thing that he wanted to create, started up in heaven. Okay? The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 20, he was in the, in the holy mount of God. Until what was found in him? Iniquity was found in him. And then he comes, and he comes down, and, 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 and he goes to the Garden of Eden after God creates in six days the, heaven, the, 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 the world and everything that's in there, and man, and puts him in the garden, and he comes, and, he, and, and, and in the very garden he goes to Eve, and he says, yeah, have God said. So this man of iniquity, this, 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 this person of iniquity, he comes to, 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 to Eve. Go, go with me to Genesis chapter Chapter three, and I'm going to try not. I'm not going to want to spend a lot of time on that. You guys know the passage. So I'm speaking. I'm preaching to the choir, but um, in, in in Genesis chapter three, Satan's plan is to oppose whatever God has done is doing, and that was from day one. Okay, he wanted to set himself as the Most High God. He wanted to be like the Most High God. He was so proud and so, so full of pride. He wanted to be like the Most High God, okay? And so, so now he comes and he's going to oppose everything that God is doing. And his plan is going to work against the opposite of what God is doing. And he's trying to subvert it and to, 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 to get the, 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 the control over that. And verse 1 says in chapter 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea... Yeah, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And we know he questions God's word. And we see he, he, the way that he gets her is through the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He challenges her pride. And, and she says, yeah, well, you know, and she takes away and she, she adds some. And then at, at the end he says, and, and the serpent said in verse 4, unto the woman, ye shall not, what? surely die he flat out denies what god is saying he says the opposite of what god is saying and his policy of evil is going from there right through all the ages and when time passed is his policy of evil is to go opposing to god what god is doing so is it any wonder for us in this dispensation that we now live to know to think that satan is also opposing and he's got a policy of evil and a plan of evil against what god is doing today it has been working when Paul was spending it, and guess what? It is still working, and a matter of fact, we're going to see tonight, it's waxing worse and worse. It's not getting it better, okay? It's not going to get better. And it's going to go right through, and it continued as, as, as the nations are falling, and, 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 and he's influencing those nations, as he's weakening the nations, and, and influencing those nations into idolatry, and going completely against what God is saying. He's now going to go... And take the very people that God singles out from Abraham and the promise he made through a seed line. And he goes against that. And he is opposing that from, 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 from right from the beginning uh, with the nation of Israel. And he, and, and, and he goes against Israel to the point of Israel is going to do and fall into that trap. And the way that he gets in is through pride. Israel loved to the idolatry of the nations. Why do you think Israel loved, Israel loved the idolatry of the nations? 
because it was a nice fat party, man. When Moses came out of that mountain, what were they doing? Now, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to try to, to do this, you know. The only thing I could dance when I did dance was um, the slow dance, okay? <laughs> I got no rhythm, okay? Look at me at, at, at the book of Psalms, 106, 106. And, and, and Brian Ross, let me tell you something about something you said. And I'm going to agree with you. This pulpit's small. <laughs> I can't get my notes in my Bible. And, and, and you know, we need to have notes like Richard or guys, you know, little notes. I told my wife to write it smaller and, and put it on a smaller piece of paper and, and you know, <laughs> and make it easier to read. But. <laughs> No, I'm just joking. <laughs> what did I say? Psalm 106. Psalm 106. And um, verse 34. That's when Israel had to go into the, into the land where God tells them when Joseph going to, uh, uh, not Joseph, um, Joshua goes into the land. And what do they have to do in the land? They had to get rid of all evil in that land because Satan had a hold in that land and the nations had a hold and they had to clean that land out. What did, he, what did Israel do? Did they do what God told him to do? No, no, they bought into the deception. And look at verse, um, verse 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works, and they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they have sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they have sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. But the issue there, look at verse, uh, verse, um, verse 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. They bought into the plan. And the nation of Israel, we know what happens with the nation of Israel because God made a covenant with the nation of Israel, with Abraham, right? Was that covenant a conditional covenant or an unconditional covenant? It was an unconditional covenant. Will He give them the land? Will He bless that nation? Will He set them up and have the rule and have control over that kingdom? Yes. But God also enters into a contract with the nation of Israel about three months into the, into the wilderness at Mount Sinai, and that is the Mosaic covenant, right? And they go into the covenant where God says, if you do what I tell you to do, I will bless you. But if you don't do what I'm going to tell you, guess what I'm going to do? And Satan, uh, no, not Satan, well, 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 Satan was in the background and, and working out his policy with the nation of Israel, and they, bought, they said to God, well, yeah, we'll do that. Instead of saying to God, you know what, God, you are Jehovah Jireh, you are God, and I'll provide, we want to rest in you and, and, and depend completely and totally on you. Instead, they said, we can do it. Bring it on. And we know what happened. According to that contract that they had with them, the nation of Israel was taken captive. Lost their land, lost everything. Why? Because Satan was all about behind this. Okay? And that causes of judgment came upon the nation of Israel. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes after 400 years of silence, and John the Baptist introduces him, and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to start his own problem. We know it before that, Satan is trying to get rid of the seed, right? He's always trying to get rid of the seed. But Christ is, is born and he's, and he's starting his public ministry. What is the first thing he does? He takes him into the world. He goes into the wilderness and Satan tempts him right there in Luke chapter 4. And I'm not going to go through all the details. But who gives him the right to say, you know, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all this. He's the God of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's got some cloud. Okay. He wasn't knowing sure who he's dealing with, but you know. But that's what he's, he's tempting Christ. We also see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in an earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is very, very predominant in that land as they're in that land and as they're functioning in that land and God's trying to, and they have to repent and, and, and be baptized and for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What is predominant in that land and influencing the nation of Israel? There is devils all over the place. Legions of them, if you will, in the land. Okay? 
And he's opposing and opposing everything that God is doing. There's an abundance of them. And Israel's leaders who had the law, who had God's word, could have just responded to God's word. says, you know what? God says that we're going to believe it. We're going to trust it and, we, and, and leave the rest up to God. Instead, they, they tried to do it their own way. They took those laws that God gave them and adjusted them to fit them by buying into what? The policy of evil. Look at what he says about the leaders of Israel in John chapter 8, if you will. In John chapter 8, verse 38. This, um, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. He's talking to the leadership. He says, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would have do the works of Abraham. But now you see, now what does, works, what does Abraham do? <laughs> Abraham believed God and it's counted unto him for what? Righteousness. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. They said unto, uh, uh, they say, then say they to him, we be not born of fornication, for we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, he would love me, for I proceed forth to came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my what? My word. Verse 44, ye, now look at this, look at this indictment against the leadership of Israel. These guys should lead Israel to the Messiah, who he is, and identify him because they have the word of God. Ye are of your father, the what? The devil. And the last of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and bowed not in the truth because, uh, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a, a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. They are so blinded to the truth because they bought into that policy of evil. Okay? Israel has become completely the opposite of what God called them to be. Okay? They should have become a peculiar people. A holy nation. A priesthood unto God that's going to take the, the message of God to the nations. As God promised that He's going to bless the nations and blesses Israel. Instead, they bought into the lie. Hook, line, and sinker, if you will. The problem with Israel is what these guys in Israel of your father devil was very religious. They were obeying man's commandment. And we know what happened through that. And with the nation of Israel rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, crucify him, release unto us Barabbas, they crucify their Messiah, right? Then Christ dies, was buried and rose again the third day, right? According to the scriptures. He spends 40 days with the disciples and he expounded to them and opened the disciples and, uh, and they give you, gave, gave them to the understand and understand the word. The, 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 the. Now I've lost my, what I wanted to say. And, uh, Luke chapter 24, can you believe it? I guess you can. <coughs> Open their understanding. That's what I was thinking. The, 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 verse 47. Luke 24. Verse 47. Uh, no, not verse 47. Sorry. Verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay. So he opens their understanding. And, and it, it tells him, wait for me. And, 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 and not many days hence, the Holy Ghost will come. The comforter will come. Right? The Holy Ghost comes. And the Holy Ghost is there to testify of who? Of the Lord Jesus Christ, that He was the Christ, the Son of the living God, right? And the res resurrection that they preached there is the fact that He was the Christ. And the nation of Israel had an opportunity, a, a, an extension there for them to repent and be converted. And as a nation who now gets it, what do they do? They still bought into the lie, okay? They still reject Him, okay? And then there's a guy there that we've learned about 
Saul of Tarsus. Brother um, Alex talk, spoke about him last night. And I love to look, I, I, I love the story of Saul of Tarsus because he was an Israelite, right? But he was also a, a Roman citizen. But he was a, he was a, the tribe of Benjamin, he's a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He's going, he was a Pharisee, and concerning the law, he was what? Blameless. And this guy in Acts chapter 6 is, is, is part of those guys that is coming to, <laughs> that, that is, um, and I know I need not to digress so too far and to chase rabbit trails here, but, you know, I learn it from <laughs> everybody else here, I guess. <laughs> but this, he's there, and he's from the School of the Libertines. He's one of those guys out there, and I believe that, uh, that, 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 that Saul of Tarsus was right there speaking to Stephen, and they could not resist the wisdom by which he spake. And it's by his feet that they lay down his feet when they stoned Stephen, right? And it's the very guy that's consenting unto the death of Stephen. He's, he's quite a big shot, you know. He's a young guy, but he's a big shot, okay? And, um, and, and he tells us in Acts 26, he was exceedingly mad. Now, a guy that's got the word of God, why would he be exceedingly mad against, <laughs> you know? Because his father was exceedingly mad. And who's his father? The father of the devil, Okay? And God takes that man, Saul of Tarsus, and saves him by his grace and flips the tables completely upside down on Satan. And second, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you will, and verse, uh, verse 5. Let's go read from verse 6 there. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 says, Howbeit we speak the wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a, what is the word? Mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Who's our glory? Us, the body of Christ, right? Unto our glory, and it's the hidden wisdom of God. And, and because he says in verse 8, says, Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of who? They crucified him, and, 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 and the princes of this world, Satan and his cronies, allowed him to be what? To be crucified. But if he knew what the finished message of the cross would mean and would bring to the world, and about this body that God has. But God is setting aside and He's building and edifying and, 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 and putting together for a cause that was never, ever revealed, ever in Scripture, uh, because God hid it in Himself, is to, to, to go with Christ into the heavenly places and to reclaim His throne of authority back into that heavenly places. And guess who is going to go with the Lord Jesus Christ and be reigning together with Him as joint heirs for eternity? Woohoo! That's us. Now we should get excited about that. Okay? We're not just safe to sit here, oh, we should learn about a, a bunch of Bible information. No, no, no. You are part of a purpose that God, the creator of everything, has put you place in in a, play, in, a, in a program that He has kept secret since the world began, and it's going to take you there, and you're going to be actively a participant in the eternal, in eternity, in, in God's plan for the heavens. Now, that excites me. I'm thankful for that. And Satan now is learning about this, what's going on. The wisdom of God is now made known to all principalities and powers in heavenly places. It's been revealed. The prince of the power of the air, the God of this world, is faced with it for every day of this dispensation. And let me tell you something. He is not happy. Because his plan was upset. Upset it. Uh, is that right what you said? Upset it? You guys know what I'm saying. <laughs> Say plan was on fair okay? Yeah. And so for the last 2,000 years, just about the last 2,000 years, Satan is being schooled. You know, he's being schooled. Okay? He's been educated about something. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. In Ephesians chapter 3, let's read from verse 8 there. Paul is writing, says, 
unto me who am less than the least of, of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, if it's unsearchable, is it searchable? No, no it's unsearchable, okay? Okay. It, 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 because there's a reason why it's unsearchable in Christ. He says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the, what? Mystery, which from the beginning of the world have been hid where? In God, and I don't know who, t- I think it was uh, uh, Brother Alex was telling this, uh, said this, and I'm not sure who said it, but, you know, when, and I always tell the story, when, when I go through this passage, I always say the same thing to everybody. He says, you know what, if I have a secret, you know what, and I hear a lot of secrets, I get a lot of information, you know. And the people say, well, would, pro- would you promise not to tell anybody? And what would I say? <gasps> I would say, of course I won't. <laughs> tell me, I, I want to hear now. <laughs> I first say, is it against the law what you're going to tell me? Okay? <laughs> because if it's against the law, I don't want to hear. All right? So, okay, tell me. And then they tell me. And I'm like, ooh. Man, that's good. But he told me I'm not to tell anybody. So I get home. I go to my wife. I said, man, I've got something, man. I, I know some, something. I don't know if I should tell you. And she tells me, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> She's listening tonight. Hi, Johnny. Love you. And then I, and I tell her or something. You know, or somebody else, I'll tell him. And I'm like, wow. I said, but promise me you're not going to tell anybody. <laughs> and before you know it, guess what? Everybody knows it. Okay? Yes, everybody knows it. And so God knew this. And God had a purpose and a plan before the foundation of the world, and he had to keep that purpose and plan secret, and he had to hit that secret in himself, because if he didn't do that, what would fulfill God's eternal purpose for eternity past and eternity future through the finished work of Christ Jesus on the cross of Calvary would not have happened. God had him. And Satan is learning that. Now look at that verse, uh, what did I say? Uh, verse, verse, 10 to, uh, verse 9 says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of what? God. The one manifold wisdom of God is now being shown and made known to principalities and, and heavenly places, and they're getting schooled. And I believe it's all principalities and powers in heavenly places. And how they're getting schooled, and how are they going to learn this stuff to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the who? Church. Church the manifold with what God is doing in us today as the members of the body of Christ, the church today, they are learning about God. For the 2,000 years, they're learning. And they are shown, and they are learning the manifold wisdom of God. Manifold is many, right? And God dispenses that now for, for everybody to know, not just this world, but for all principalities and powers in heavenly places to know that. I work on motorcycles. Okay, you guys, some of you know it. I got petrol in my veins, okay? And you got an intake manifold. And guess what else you have? Exhaust, a discharge manifold. Right. And so whatever thing is in that motor, if you want to know how that thing performs, right, John? You do that throttle and discharge out of the manifold there comes you will know, man, that thing is tuned, that thing goes, that thing is hot, that thing is, whoo, okay? It's illegal to go fast, by the way, okay? <laughs> so everybody can hear. Dare Stratum's coming down the road with his triumph, you know? His triumph is heard throughout all the land, okay? <laughs> everybody can now hear and can see and is learning about the manifold wisdom of God. Do you think Satan, with his plan of evil, to destroy God's plan, he's happy with what's going on now? Do you think he wants to disrupt what we do today? And if you look at the Pauline epistles, okay, if you look at the Pauline epistles, by the way, go with me, just go with me quickly to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1.
And let's go read from verse 16 there quickly. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the what? Who's he talking about? Yeah, the, but, but who's the head of the, of the body of the church? Jesus Christ, okay. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence? For it pleased the Father that in whom him should all what? Fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile some things. No, no, no. Reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things where? Why would things in heaven need to be reconciled to God if heaven not so perfect? No, it's not at all. Satan has a stronghold up there. That's right. Exactly. And so what God is doing, He's going to reconcile all things, not just things of the earth, but what also? Things in heaven unto Himself. And you and I are going to be part of that pr pr program. <laughs> Oh, that's a privilege, isn't it? Amen. That's a humbling privilege. Yes, it is. And it's something to be thankful for. Does it, anybody here deserve that privilege? Mm -hmm. Put up your hand if you deserve it. Mm -hmm. None of us deserve it. But by God's grace, we are part of that. Amen. And Satan is looking at this Gentiles that now God is saving with an equal basis of the nation of Israel. This these guys that were far from God, without hope, without God in the world, without Christ in the world, if you will. And saves us and makes us part of a purpose and plan. And now the principalities of thousand heavenly places getting schooled. God is schooling them. He's, he's teaching them and he's showing them his manifold wisdom by us, what he's doing in us. And so Satan is not happy about that. And so what he has, and we see this in the Pauline epistle, uh, epistles, he is, he's caught completely by surprise in the revelation and, and the mystery, and he continues now his plan of corrupting God's word, and as a matter of fact, that plan is intensifying, and it's going to be completely intensified in the, in the seventh week of, uh, 70th week of Daniel, when the man of, uh, of perdition, the son of perdition, is sitting upon the throne. It's going to come culminate, Okay. But Satan, in his plan of evil with us now today, is very crafty, and he's used wiles and tricks and deceptions and subtlety. And you and I need to, be, would, we need to know about his policy of evil. We need to know, be aware of what he is doing. How is he kind of going to counterfeit what God is doing? What is the mystery of iniquity? It's completely the opposite of the mystery of what? Godliness of what God is doing in the church today. So there's a few phrases in the scriptures that Paul has used to warn you and I and our epistles that God has given us from Romans to Philemon that we need to take note of and be aware of about what's going on here. And in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, you, you can write some of these down. I'm going to try to go through them fairly quickly. I don't want to spend too much time, but it's just the phrases that I want to give to you. In Ephesians 6 verse 11, he says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the what? wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil is the tricks of the devil. He's, he's a tricky guy. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11, Paul uses the phrase, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. What do you think Satan wants to get an advantage? Who's us? Members of the body of Christ. And he wants to get an advantage. Can he, get a, can he touch me? I'm in Christ. He can't touch me. No, let Satan get advantage for we not ignorant of his what? Devices. <laughs> He's got devices. He's got a plan, man. Second Corinthians chapter 2.17. For we not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as in sight of God, in sight of God speak in Christ. Those that corrupt the word of God, do they corrupt the word of God just because that's what they decide to do? Or do you think that there's a, there's a policy of evil behind it that wants to corrupt God's word? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled, what? Eve. So he beguiled Eve under that program in the garden, right? Is he still beguiling today? 
Well, according to this verse, he is in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. And we're going to go back to that chapter again later on. But I feel as by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds, who's your minds? The believers at Corinth, okay? And it's us, you and I today, your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Is it possible that your mind can be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ? And who's behind that? Satan and his subtlety. And his tricks and his devices. He's wanting, he wants to take that away. He wants to do the opposite of that, if you will. In Galatians 3 verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. Who hath, what's the next word? Bewitched, Bewitched you that you should obey not the truth. Should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth. Crucified. Bewitched you. Those are strong language. You know, the strong word. They meaning something. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 7. He did run. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? There's an hindrance for you not to obey the truth. Who's behind that hindrance, you think? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm just using these verses of hindrance and devices and, 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 and tricks, etc. Um, and wiles. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. I will therefore that the younger woman marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak. Give none occasion to who? The ad, ad, adversary. What did, you, what did you guys say? No, it's not adversary. It's adversary, okay? Um, adversary. My wife will correct me when I get home. She's not adversary, Des. To speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after what? Satan. Do you get the gist of where we're going with this? And it's a warning for us in here. Satan is now in full force trying to prevent the truth of God's word to be preached and to be understood by unbelievers and believers. He doesn't want an unbeliever to hear the clear message of the gospel. He wants to blind the minds of those that do not believe. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, if you will. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. There's a full-on onslaught, man. It's war, Right? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and you know what? A lot of times I say right, and the reason I say right is not because a lot of times when I say it's right, I'm looking for some affirmation, you know. So if I say right and you think I'm wrong, just say wrong. <laughs> but just remember when you say wrong, you're going to throw me completely off balance. And I'm like, <laughs> what now, you know? <laughs> so be quiet, Charlie. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4. Um, let's go read from verse 1 there. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are what? Lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Why is he blinded the mind of them believe, which believe not? Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let me tell you something, what I see and what I understand and when I look at this, the, 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 in, in the latter days, and as the closer we get to the time that Christ is going to take us out, you know, and a lot of times I say, man, I just hope the rapture can take me. I can get out of this place. But the way I look at that too is, is you know, if the rapture does take place, every day the rapture doesn't take place, there's an opportunity for somebody to hear the gospel and get saved. That's right. 
Okay. And so he says, no, but it says, In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay. And I tell you what, as we go on and we get closer to that day that we're going to be taken out here, it is more and more difficult to get people to hear the gospel, and to even to give us an ear to listen to the gospel. That's not going to get easier. And his plan is intensifying as it goes on. And so he's blinded their minds so that they, so the unbelievers can't hear the gospel and see the light of the glorious gospel who is the image of God to shine unto them. The Brother Rodney this morning used the passage in, in Acts um, chapter 26, and I think it's around verse 18 when he's talking about from the power of Satan unto God. Go, let's go there quickly. Acts chapter 18. <coughs> Acts chapter 18. Oh, 26, I'm sorry. 26. And verse 17 says, Paul is, is rehearsing before King Agrippa what, what, what's happened to him and, 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 and how, what he's, why he's doing what he's doing now. He's delivering, verse 17 says, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I sent thee to open the eyes and to turn, so the, uh, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to what? The, the, the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them, right? To, to light and from the power of Satan unto what? So that tells me there's unbelieving world out there. The unbelieving world out there, has, uh, they're under the power of who? Satan. Satan. And what is the only thing that can take them from the power of Satan, the stronghold of Satan, and to bring him into, from that darkness under the stronghold of Satan, to bring him into the glorious light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, is the message and the complete message of the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. His death, His burial, His resurrection. And we have the responsibility of preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news of the grace of God. Because that's the only thing that will bring light. And you think Satan knows that? So if he can get us to preach a gospel that does not bring light, but sounds like it can bring light, but doesn't bring light, that's, he's going to be happy with that, right? He's going to be subtle regarding that issue. But his attacks not, and his attacks not just for, for, against those, and his plan is not against those not to see the gospel, but for believers, then it comes to you and I. What, what about you and I then? His attack is on God's program for the body of Christ's ed, uh, edification, and, and he wants to cause believers to be confused, to be immature, and depart from the faith. If I ask any one of you yes, uh, tonight here, one on one, I said, show, tell me somebody that you know that was sold under the message of God's grace, sold under understanding God's right, the word right about it, who was excited about it, who's not excited about it anymore, that's walked away from it. I almost guess that most of you can give me somebody's name that has departed from this message. We just recently lost people that, uh, that was assembling with us. That's not assembling with us because, you know what? We don't have enough social programs. Now they were the they're now they were the program where this program is preach, pre street preaching and the street preaching is like if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart of God you shall be saved Israel's program they're not preaching a clear gospel but hey we got the program we feel good Ephesians chapter 4. So Satan is now, he, he is, he's, 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 with his policy of evil, is against you and I and what God is doing with you and I in the body of Christ. And we're going to get to the, the mystery of godliness by about half past nine. We should be there. <laughs> if we don't hear the pattering of the kids' feet running in you. Now, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be done, yeah. I, I promise you, I'm... I'm I'm time conscious. I'm not like these other guys. <laughs> I thank God that I'm not like these other people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 13 says... 
Well, verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. All these things has been given past tense. We know that the word of God has been completed, but God is still in the process of the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Would you agree with me? So that program is still on. Why do we need edified saints? Why does the body of Christ need to be... Why do saints need to be perfected to do the work of the ministry, to edify the body of Christ? And verse 13 says, Still we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more what? You and I now have the completed word of God as God has given it us and, and progressively revealed the complete revelation of the mystery. We are at the place where we come, and I believe, and unless somebody disagree with me, and I'm still maybe not going to believe this told then, but we, we at the place where we come to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. We have that knowledge in the finished work of God, word of God. Okay, because he says, but until then we had to need apostles, prophets, and pastors, and teachers, and evangelists. Now we, we have the completed Word of God, and still we, we now can come to the, under the, the, the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. It is there in His Word. And the reason is that we, we, we henceforth be no more what? Satan wants you as a believer who has already got eternal life sealed under the devil to remain a child, to be like the Corinthian believers, to be carnal. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You know what Satan is going to do? He's going to have all the uh, this, 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 this winds of doctrines out there. And, and, and you know what? I've seen people then, they're like, yeah, oh, this is fantastic. Praise the Lord. This is the best conference we've ever heard. This is the best messages we've ever heard. The, the brothers teaches the word so great. We are so excited. Next year, there's some other conference that's teaching something different. Then I said, oh, it's just so great to be here. It's so wonderful to be here. You know what is that? That's a child that's tossed to and fro. Quit you like men. Be strong. Stand fast in the faith. And, the, and then the Word of God is given us by inspiration and preserved for us. And we have the, possible, the ability within God's Word as we take it in, as it effectually works in us, as it edifies us to stand and be not to be tossed to and fro. Amen. I thank God for that. Because there was a time in my life where it was like, mm, 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 you know, which side? But the more and more I take this book in, the more and more I take God's Word in right about it and I study it, the more it works in me. Not what I'm doing, not with my cleverness, because I'm not very educated, okay? And, and, and I take the Word of God in, the perfect Word of God, and it works in me effectually. And guess what? It gives me stability. It makes me from being a kid and from a child to a man. And Satan wants you to be tossed to and fro like children. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Paul is writing to young Timothy and he's faced with the work of the ministry. He's faced to set things in order. And he needs to encourage and exhort that, 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 that some teach no other doctrine because there's others who are teaching other doctrines. And he's got this job to set it up. And Paul is warning Timothy and he's telling him something that he needs to take note of. And if Timothy, and I said this on Sunday morning at Shorewood, if, if Timothy as the leader of that local assembly in the book of Timothy and Titus, and, and these guys had to take a note of what God has given to them to set in order in the local churches, okay, do you think that excludes you as a member of the body of Christ from taking note of that because you're not a leader in a local church? We all are ministers of Christ and we're all ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you and I need to know what that book is saying even to the leadership of the church and for the order of the local church so you know how you can function within that. So he tells Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the what? Faith. Faith. 
Now, let me ask you. Tomorrow, unfortunately, I've got some business Thursday and Friday that I have to take. No, you know, you got to pay the bills, right? Tomorrow, I'm in Chicago. What? What did we said? Tomorrow? The bills. B i l l s. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, make fun of me. <laughs> You're going to get before the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> you need to treat an elders and father. And I said, oh, no, no. <laughs> now, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. The bills, the bills, the bills. Uh, i got to pay the accounts, okay? The invoices and all those things. Tomorrow I've got to go back home. I'm in Chicago. I'm going to go to O'Hare, Frontier Airlines, by the way. I don't like those guys. Just, I put a ticket, I paid for a ticket, I thought I paid for it, and today I had to check in, and suddenly I have to pay for my bag now, suddenly too. To carry on my bag, and carry on my bag is more expensive than booking my bag. Anyway, so I'll, and I'm wasting time now too. But I'll be in Chicago, Frontier Airlines, O'Hare Airport. I'm the air, right? But tomorrow, I will depart from, 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 from Chicago, from O'Hare. And I will go to Orlando Airport. And by, by, tomorrow night, my lovely wife's going to pick me up. And by another evening, I'm going to be able to be with my wife, give a nice hug and a nice kiss. Ten-second kiss, Brother Richard. And, and <laughs> I will, <coughs> you know, and I'll be with her. But I won't be here. I'll have departed. So I'm not here anymore. That tells me when Paul is saying this, is there the saints and there's believers that's going to be here as the message, God it and what have you, and guess what's going to happen? They will depart. He says, some shall depart. And he uses the sum a few times in the first Timothy. And by second Timothy, Paul says, all in Asia has forsaken me. Okay? And so he says, now the Spirit speak expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, how will they depart from the faith? What will cause them to depart from the faith? What is the thing that people will not hold on to this message anymore, hold on to the faith anymore, hold on to what builds and edifies them anymore? Because the satanic policy of evil, his plan of evil is working because the next part of this verse is giving heed to seducing what? Spirits and doctrines of what? Of devils. Who's behind this that people depart from the faith? Satan. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving uh, uh, of them which believe and know the truth, for every creature of God is good, etc., etc., etc. It's going to be a departure from the faith. But the departure from the faith is not going to be coming from the departure from the faith and say, guys, I have a we have a seance in the building next door, and we're going to pray to, to Satan himself, and we're going to light candles, and we're going to all wear back, black clothes, and, and we're going to, or whatever, you know. That is not the plan to seduce you by. He's going to seduce you by religious act, and the way he's going to do it is going to get your flesh to work. I'm not going to marry, I'm not going to eat this, and when I do that, I buy into the plan. And that's the way I depart. I just go to the church next door. I still feel like I'm godly. But now I only have a form of godliness. Because now I deny the power thereof because I have departed from the faith. Satan's counterfeit program is to corrupt God's program today. That mystery of iniquity is the opposite. And as I look at this, at the mystery of iniquity, I can't help but have to look at the mystery of godliness. And the mystery of godliness, Paul uses that term in 1 Timothy chapter 3, when he tells Timothy to set things in order and he's going to do things in a local church, and he's going to give you the place that the role of men, the role of women, and the qualifications and the responsibilities of the, of the, of the qualifications of the, of the bishops and the deacons. 
And by verse 14, he says, in verse 14, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, he says, These things write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou, sh- that I, that thou mayest know how to, thou oughtest to behave thyself, where? In the house of God, which is the church of the what? The living God, the pillar and ground of the what? So for you to know how you need to behave yourself in the in the, in, the, in the house of God, which is the church, the pulling ground of the truth, you need to have the doctrine and the teaching of God's Word and teach no other doctrine, right? right. You've got to get into this book. You understand what God is saying and what God is doing today, all right? So you know how to behave yourself there. And then he says, because you are in the house of God, which is what? We are in the house of God today, right? Not this hotel, but in the body of Christ, Okay. Which is the church, which, the house of God, which is the church of the what? Oh man, I have the living God. I'm, I'm in the house of the living God. I'm part of the church of the living God. And about, I'm, I'm part of something that is an habitation of God through the Spirit. If I just think of that sometimes a little bit more, and that pre- of the privileged and precious position to be in. I would should rethink sometimes about the things that I do with my body. In verse 16, he says, and without controversy. <laughs> controversy, right? I always said controversy, and I think I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> I had some people saying to me, Wow, Des, we just love to hear you preach. You have the greatest accent. I said, what about the word? Now, we don't understand what you're saying, but it's, just, it's great. <laughs> Keep it up, brother. I could say anything, I guess. No, I can't. And without controversy, great is the mystery of what? Godliness. God was manifesting, and Brother Richard spoke about that. That's what God is manifesting Himself and what God is doing in the church, the body of Christ today. He's not talking about the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ as such as what He's doing today in you and I as the members of the body of Christ. That's the mystery of godliness. And Satan's program, an opposite program that he has, opposing what God is doing is the mystery of iniquity to destroy what God is doing in the body of Christ today. He don't want you to walk by faith and stand by faith. He wants you to have... And go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Well, let's go read from verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, Fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of what? God. Having a what? Form of, dark, uh, of godliness by denying what? If we can come together, wear the clothes that the believer wears, and dress like a believer dress, and sing songs like believers should be singing songs, and just have a good old time, and, and, and just be under the dominion of somebody else is telling us what to do, and what not to do, how much we should give, show me your 1040 so that I can figure out how much money you owe us. <laughs> and I get you to perform under that system. And when I do that, you have a form of godliness. Oh, I go to church. I look at, look at me, you know. I'm walking like Brother Leroy now. I have a form of godliness. I would rather you walk like this, you know. I'd rather you walk like that than have a form of godliness. I want to rather see your true Self, your true colors. Yeah, thank you. Rather than you have a form, being a hypocrite, feigning the faith, Paul says. Satan is the prince and the power of the air. He's the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He's the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. There's a time we walk according to the course of this world, but we, we're so thankful we're saved by God's grace. Amen. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Now I'm just about through with my introduction here. 
No, really. I'll show you. <laughs> you know one thing I've learned about this? I'm, I'm, gonna I'm not going to be long, I promise. Trust me, okay? <laughs> I come to this conference and I have a message, I have a preach. I make notes, man. I got like nine, ten pages of notes. I'm like, ah, oh, what am I going to do? You know, I come here like, ah, what direction do I take, you know? I go like Charlie, and I go like, mm, jump, 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 next verse. Mm, jump, 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 let's go to the next verse, okay? I go home, and I go preach this message in six lessons, six Sundays, okay? We always have something to preach. It's always something. That, what, what did I say? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 says, and, and, and you, that's you and I, the believers, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, in time past, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. Who's in charge of the course of this world? Satan. Satan. According, to the, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God who was rich in mercy for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. But God commended His love toward us. And while we were what? Yet sinners. And as Gentiles, we were on the other side of that middle water petition, not deserving. We deserve, the only thing that we deserve is the wrath of God. But God in His rich mercy... Sent His Son and died for us, kept it hegret, and brings us into a relationship with Him, into a body. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You think Satan is happy with the fact that you guys, that was one time on the other side of the middle of Titian, is now seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He's going to oppose that, and He doesn't want you to, to live with the confidence of the knowledge of who He has made you to be. And He's going to take you away, and the way that He's going to take you away, and I don't have time to go into all this, is by Jewish fables and, and all these things. He's going to take you away from that. And what he's going to do is going to what Paul says to the Galatians in Galatians chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Go with me to Galatians. You're right there almost. Galatians chapter 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you, this only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of what? Faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the what? The flesh. They have now moved away from being made perfect in the Spirit, receiving the free gift of salvation, the complete work of Christ, to where they're now under a performance system and do the work of their own flesh to make themselves, prove themselves righteous before God. And you know what God says about that in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So what's it going to mean to a believer that has begun in the faith, begun in the spirit, have that perfect position, who now go into the works of the flesh, you really say, and all the power has been taken away from you, and what you do now is you frustrate the grace of God because you say, Christ died in vain, I can do it. And that's why he, the very first thing that he corrupts, and I'm just going to say this, I'm not going to be able to go to the verses, is to corrupt the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of Christ. Because if he can preach you a gospel, and I just recently went to a couple of meetings in another ch big churches, and for four nights I sat there and listened, and I listened for the gospel, and I tell you what, and for four nights I did not get a gospel message. I got some good messages, but no, when the gospel was presented, it was weak. Not even weak, it could not save you. Because the gospel is, oh, just make Jesus Lord of your life, Okay. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins. Ask Jesus to come. Let me tell you something. If I can turn from my sins, why would I need Christ Jesus? Why did He die for me if I can turn from my sins? 
that sounds good, that feels good. Come to the front. Let's play the music. Play the music, brother. Put it soft. Come, come. And you're moved by your emotions and you're bringing, you're standing up. There's, oh, I confess all my sins. You better get it all ready now. Make sure you confess all of them. And, and you bring that, and people feel like they're saved, but yet, you know what? They're not saved. They still go to the eternal damnation, to the hot place. Because you're going to go either one or two places, Brother Ross Hargard always says. Smoking or not smoking? <laughs> and he, he, he wants you not to preach the clear gospel. He's so happy if you can preach people the gospel that is not the gospel. Ask Jesus in your life. Give your life to the Lord. You know what? If we could give our life to the Lord, that would have been a plan of salvation. But there's nothing we could give God. Because we come from our pappy Adam. And we were dead in trespasses and sin, and God is not interested in dead in trespasses and sin. That's why He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was made sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. And His policy of evil is to go out and get and, just, and mess all that up. He wants us to turn to Jewish fables, turn to a false gospel, mix words with great, works with grace, etc., etc., God's not interested in works. God is interested in faith. Believing what He says. My time is up. There's a couple of verses that Paul tells us. He says, neither give place to the devil. He says, take heed. Look, go with the, in, in closing. And I don't think I really do the complete justice to the assignment here, but let's close off here. In, in Acts chapter 20, Paul is meeting with in Miletus with the elders. He calls the elders from Ephesus down to speak to them. And he's talking to this elders. He's going to go back to the church and serve that church and take care of that church. Verse 24 says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course, course with joy and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I, I know that ye all, that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. What does he say? I preached the, everything that you needed to know and need to hear regarding what God has to say and what he's doing, his purpose, his will, and I've given it to you. Verse 28, now he says to them, he's turning to these guys, he says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this. Now this is sad. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Now, where does the wolves come? Are they part of the flock? No, they're going to come from outside, okay? They are Satan's so-called ministers of righteousness, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, okay? He says, sparing not sparing the flock, but that's not the only place where Satan's ministers of righteousness are coming from, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 on there. He says, but also, here's the sad part, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. If I can use the Apostle Paul's, and I, and, 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 and I know what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he says that take heed, you think you stand, well, I get it messed up now. Um, if you hate lest you fall, um, you know, think that you stand and think eat lest you fall. But if I can use the Apostle Paul's name and I can look at all of you guys here this morning, uh, this evening, and I say to you, also of your own self, some men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. That is the reality and the possibility. And I surely pray that I would stand and, and stay the course 
and finish the course and stay the course and run the race and, and fight the good fight of faith and stay with the doctrine of God's word because I do not want to heap disciples off to myself. I don't want to be this guy, but it's possible that I can become one of these guys. As soon as pride sets in me, sets and takes hold of me, and it's very easy because I get a fat head every now and then. Don't come and tell me tonight, great message, Des, because I could go, ooh, mm, you like that, what I was going to say. But they also don't come and tell me, your message is terrible, okay? Don't tell me that. <laughs> Here's the thing. Of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things. It's going to buy into the satanic policy of evil. Take heed unto yourself. In closing, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I got to do it. I have to do this. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 15 says, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. He's just told Timothy to refuse profane and old wise fables, etc., etc. Okay? Verse 16 says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Take heed unto thyself and unto the what? So the instruction to Timothy and instruction to you and I is to take heed unto yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that what? If you take heed to the doctrine, that means you're going to believe the doctrine, you give attention to the doctrine, you're going to believe the doctrine, it's going to work in you effectually, and you will save yourself. Save yourself from what? From this present evil world. And from the policy of evil that's going on, and Satan's attack on you. And you have to put on the whole armor. I didn't even get into all of that. Put the armor of God on, that you may stand, and having done all to what? What they can withstand and having done all to stand, right? And when you profit, others will profit too. You don't just save yourself when you stand by the faith and the finished word of God and what God has given you, but you save others too because you can warn them. You can tell them, take heed. Watch ye. Be careful. God's word is, will equip us to do that and to stand and withstand. Father, we thank you this evening for your grace. We thank you for your finished work that equips us. And we know we live in a present evil world. We also know that the, the mischief and Nikki doth work, has already worked, and is still working and will be working. And we thank you that you have provided for us salvation, eternal salvation, not just from the eternal damnation and punishment of eternal hell, but also salvation for every day of our walk while we're on this earth still. And thank you for the provision of your word and your doctrine that can establish us. And we praise you and we thank you for that by Christ Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. I think we can all agree that.